Okay. Let's see. I believe we're live. One moment while I double check. If I return this into a podcast, I'll have to cut those initial couple seconds off. Okay, we're good to go. Welcome to the Practical Magic Show, episode 17. This episode is about the engineering of magic. I call it the science behind the sorcery. I am so excited for today. I know I say that every week, but I feel like this week's guest holds a very, very, very special, irreplaceable forever for all of timelines, forward and backward, place in my heart. <laughs> Dr. Carol, who is a shamanic practitioner, an incredibly smart business person, a healer, a magician, I like to consider a dear friend. And you know, I don't always do this, but I think sharing a tiny bit of how you and I met is really fun for this particular conversation because you know, right now I'm talking so much about this book that I've created and there is no book without Patrick Carroll. Like there's Pepper and Patrick Carroll, like those, those two characters have to be in the book. So when you read the book and you hear about this amazing shaman that I talk about, that's Patrick. We met at a time where my life was completely taking on a direction I never, ever, ever anticipated. And Patrick, I'll never forget the day that I called you after our first session and I said, did you know I was pregnant? And you were like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, our work just took on infinite depth and has impacted me. I have not referred, I have never referred more people to anyone other than you and will continue to do so forever because you are just that magical. So thank, thank you for being here. Hey, f real always fun, Vanessa. Always fun to connect with you, and we always end up doing great work. But we always giggle and laugh our way through it. So you know that's uh, that's the uh, added bonus here. That's absolutely true. So one of the, one of the other reasons I'm like really really excited to have you here is because I know that we have done so much magical work. So magic is operating outside of logic. Magic is where we're participating in more than what we're used to looking at in our practical world, so to speak. So what's really fun is I've experienced an incredible amount of the benefit of the magic that we've talked about. But today is really special because I get to really learn, like, what have you been doing all this time? <laughs> what were you doing all those times you were on the phone? So yeah. we started our conversation about this around and you phrase it really, I love the language that you use around it. You talk about the spiritual technology, the structure, the engineering and the wiring and the principles of magic as a kind of filling in the gaps around this conversation around manifestation and attraction that we hear so much about. Yes. Let's dive in there and kind of talk about how you see the, this perspective as fundamental to that. Okay. Um, I often say my work is a mashup of quantum mechanics, uh, Jungian analytical psychology, basically Jung's concept on the structure of the psyche, and various shamanic principles on how to move in among the various dimensions and how to work with the energy that you find in these dimensions. And you kind of mash all that together and you 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 get an idea of what I do and, and, and how I do it. Um, the, the, the fundamental issue is this, quantum mechanics over the past several decades has made very great progress in moving toward the same area that all of the spiritual traditions have talked about for thousands of years in you know, different dimensions and spiritual work and time is fluid and all these things. And so we've had all this spiritual work and these spiritual tr traditions saying all these things. And then we have hard science moving in the direction through quantum mechanics going, damn, it's true. It's real. There really is that stuff out there. We don't, time is fluid. There are different dimensions. You, you know, all this kind of, you know, anyway, so it's been really fun to, as I've done my work and I was trained in various shamanic practices, once I got out there and was doing my work, I'm like, wait a minute, this is kind of like that quantum mechanics thing that's called entanglement. Oh, I get it. 
there's there's entanglement between electrons. There's entanglement between people in these other dimensions. And then, you know, we get to non-ordinary reality. Quantum mechanics talks about non-ordinary reality. Well, those are just different dimensional states where time and matter operate differently than they do in this dimension. And, and again, we've known that from a spiritual tradition and meditation and uh, prayer and these various things. But the cool thing is now we have science defining it and confirming it. And so that really greatly accelerated my work. And I, I do a lot of work with sexual violence, victims of sexual violence and untangle all, you know, my, my basic question is, why is it so hard for people who have experienced sexual violence? They can't get over it. They can't get past it. You know, they, they're just stuck for, for 20 or 30 years. And, you know, psychiatry and psychology and drugs and everything can't get past it. Well, once you get into these other dimensions, you find out that, that, that they're actually entangled with their perpetrator. And once you understand that, you can untangle the entanglement and poof, they're free and the trauma is released and all that. So that's where all this came from. But it's based on pretty scientific principles, actually. And I love that you you ground that in there. And I love that you talk about all this really intricate, incredible knowledge, and then you finish it with poof, <laughs> which is very you. So when we talk about non-ordinary time and, you know, different dimensions and how does, can you explain how when we talk about <clears throat> manifestation or even if we, we just want to use different language, like when I think of something that I really want to create. I feel like there's <clears throat> kind of two different schools of thought that have started to emerge. And you're kind of, for me, <clears throat> grounding us in this third blended school of thought. So the one school of thought is like, I have this thing I want and I will make it happen. Yep. I feel like I was firmly rooted in that school of thought when I met you. And yeah. also, I control every element of how it becomes and doesn't and et cetera, et cetera. Like it's all about me and my action. Then there's this other school of thought, which is manifestation. And I'll just sit here and I'll think positive thoughts and I'll work on my vibe and like it will appear in my world. Yes. But you have this knowledge of it's, it's, it's kind of both of those things or is it neither of those things? How does all this structure and multidimensional science come into play when I'm going from, let's say I want to create... <clears throat> uh, I don't know, a million dollar business. I'll just make that up. Okay. How would that how would that look using the kind of structuring and engineering and spiritual technology that you know about? Well, the, the it, it can get complicated, uh, but in the in 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 the simplest diagram that I can give you, Vanessa, it's uh, in your in your mental fields you create this vision and this desire, and that then generates an energy in it, in mental energy, but mental energy itself is in a separate dimension than our 3D world. So, you know, there it is. That mental energy then goes out in, in, through your particular energetic system. And, and um, there's some complications there possibly, but in, in the most simplest sense, it goes out and basically combines into second chakra. And the second chakra, we everybody associates second chakra with sex. Well, it's really not sex, it's creation. Second chakra is about creation and, and it's associated with sex because creating life uh, and, and you know birthing children. But it's really much bigger than that. So second chakra is kind of like the creative, where the real creative power is. And second chakra connects directly to the quantum fields. So, the, so your mental construct of this business um, comes through your energetic system hits sh second chakra, goes out into the quantum fields as this concept. And, th and the quantum universe is very responsive and can create anything because it's this infinite and we get into quantum mechanics, we get back to quantum mechanics. But the quantum fields are this energetic dimension in the universe that says, oh, that's what you want? Okay, here you go, poof. And depending on how complex it is, then certain synchronicities start to happen in your life that just lead you right to where you, what you want. And, and all of a sudden, there it is manifest. So in the simplest sense, it's, it's the, the mental concept 
rolls through your energetic system, hits second chakra, goes out into the quantum fields, and the quantum fields bring it back to you and create all of the synchronicity in various dimensions to make things happen in your 3D world where clients start to call and you develop you know, your business structure and off you go. And there you, and there you have it. So in the simplest sense, that's how it works. And I love the simplicity of that because I also want to get into the why doesn't, if it's that simple, why doesn't it work? Where do we get in the way of this or where does it get clogged up or what are the, where are the places that the, the system doesn't flow with that much ease? Yeah. And, 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 and there's the work. Um, there's a number of issues about that. One is, which I find most often is you're blocking it. There's something in your system, in your energetic system, generally connected to chakras, but not always. Sometimes it's buried in the psyche of, of you're not okay with financial success. Um, I worked with a client this week that had this major block from a past lifetime that there was huge issue about I, it's not okay to be wealthy. It's not okay to be successful because of this whole trauma that existed in past lifetime. So you go find that, clear it, all of a sudden the energy can flow. There's also issues about um, maybe that's not the right lesson for you in this lifetime. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a whole spiritual direction of each incarnation. You come, you came here, we all come into the each incarnation with a very specific set of spiritual lessons that we need to do so that we can move on and advance into our spiritual evolution. And maybe being wealthy will, will F up mm. a lesson that you're supposed to learn. So your guides will actually block it. Mm. Um, from saying, no, that's not where you are supposed, that's not the stuff you're supposed to be working on in this lifetime. you got all these other things you're supposed to be doing. So that's another one that, that gets in the way. Um, and then I, the, the, the third one is kind of my, my, my med school analogy, which very quickly, you, let's, say, let's say Vanessa has always wanted to be a surgeon. Hypothetically, you want to be a surgeon, and and from a little kid, you say, "I want. I'm going to go to med school. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a surgeon," and and you get through, and you're you're you know you get into pre med in college, and they say, "Okay, you got to take uh, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, uh, calculus, math, physics, all this stuff." And you're going like, "No, dude, you don't understand. I want to be a surgeon. I want to take the class that shows me how to cut people open and get the cancer out." And they're going like, "No, it doesn't work that way. You got to go go over." 90 degrees over here and learn all this stuff before you can come back on that path and move forward to being a surgeon. Mm -hmm. And lots of times that's the issue. Um, the universe says, we'll give you what you want, but you're not ready yet to have it. You got to go over here and learn all this stuff first. Then we can bring you to the, the goal that you're asking us for. Um, so those are some of the things that get in the way of um, of manifesting what you want, all of which are understandable, trackable, and clearable. And that's the work I do, is help people clear all this stuff so they can get on track with what they want. I feel like I can, I mean, we both know I can personally relate to all three of those <laughs> blocks. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember we had a, a session where I had a soul contract that was like, I will not be wealthy because I was some sort of like, Donald Trump tyrant. Do you remember that conversation? I do. I do. And it's not unusual, by the way. Yeah. Um, I run um, into that. So there's the, the we're blocking it because we have something in our present life or past life that we have decided we don't want this for. We have mm -hmm. that not aligned with our spiritual path, which I feel like you threw that one in specifically for me. <laughs> Just kidding. We've talked about that too. So it's not aligned with your spiritual journey. And then the yeah. third is that you're not ready for surgery. Like you need to go over and learn all this other stuff for it. That kind of makes me think about that speaks to that first way of creating that I was talking about, which is like, I'll go and make this happen. That kind of, that reminds me of that. Like if you learn about how this works, you realize that life is creating concurrently with you through synchronicity. So you're more open and aware of every opportunity, every conversation, every person that shows up where if you're operating from this other space of I'll do it myself, you're kind of like, you're in my way and 
don't anybody talk to me and you're kind of missing all of these opportunities that life is trying to actually work with you to create it. It's true. Yeah, it's it, very true. All of that's true. Yes. So how would one know where to go when they are feeling like this isn't working? I feel totally stuck. How, do, how does somebody get themselves back in alignment with which whatever they need to do to track clear and move forward? Yeah, good question. Um, the, the, the first thing is to understand that there's structure here. It's not <clears throat> some you know magical force that's preventing me from being successful or I'm a loser or you know ah, nothing ever goes my way. You know you get it's very easy to get trapped in that. but if you find that you're stuck, the first thing to do is go, okay, there's a reason why I'm stuck. There's structure here. I don't know what the reason is, but there is a reason that I will, I can, you know, let's figure it out. Um, I just don't understand what it is or where that problem is, but I know that there's a, there's something there that's in the way and I can, I can use this knowledge of, of multiple dimensions and various energy flows and quantum mechanics and all this stuff. So, the first step would be to journal it, just start journaling. And, you know, how do you feel about it? What do you, you know, and, and that'll slowly move you into the, into the, the deeper levels where you can start to kind of see more about what's going on. And it may, again, your intuition could like, you know, this is a past lifetime. Why do I keep feeling that this has something to do with my past or, or, or it'll lead you to a particular, you know, you keep thinking about, you know, your father, you know, every time I think about this issue and my dad comes up, what is that about? Well, there's, so your psyche will bring forward some hints about where the problem actually exists. And you can move forward into that either through your journal or personal work or work with a practitioner to help you move into those dimensions, track it, figure out what it is, and then surgically remove it. And clear it. Yeah. <laughs> Surgically remove it is the most perfect description of what it looks like to work with you. But I can see a couple mm -hmm. places where that, that answer could get clogged up, at least for me. And so therefore I'm imagining other people who are watching. And one is, first, I think it, it would be so helpful to know the stuff that you've shared about the structure of the way things work, because I can relate to myself and a lot of my clients feeling like there's some magical force either rewarding them or punishing them. And when you're like, that first of all doesn't exist, you've got to go inward and journal about it, which there's often resistance there. But I think yes. that they're trusting that what is coming up is the thing to look at. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, don't run from it. People run from it. And, 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 and they run from it because look, I get it. It's icky and it's uncomfortable. And sometimes it's really terrifying and it just scares the shit out of you. You know, I don't want to, I ain't going there, man. You know, it's dark and terrible and horrible memories. And, you know, people did bad things to me. I mean, whatever the story is, but as you say, that's, that's the journey. That's the solution. That's where the answer is, is where things are, may feel uncomfortable. Um, and there are ways to slowly move into that space and it requires some courage and some trust, uh, but you can slowly move into it and work your way through it and resolve it. And then you're free of it forever and the energy starts to flow and off you go. So again, just understand there is a structure, there is engineering. You just don't understand the engineering yet, but once you understand the engineering, as as mysterious as it might be, um, then you can then you can work with it and figure it out and fix it and all of a sudden unleash all that energy which starts flowing into your life and then you the energy flows into second chakra and uh, quantum fields and poof you know uh, off you go. The other element of trust though that comes up, I think, that I'd love to hear you talk about is, let's say you are. I don't know, there's a particular action in your business that you would need to take that would be in alignment with whatever that vision is that you'd want to take, but you feel stuck or confused or 
fearful or whatever. And this memory of your dad keeps coming up. You know, just, you, you almost don't catch it, you know, and then it get, comes up again and you're like, hey, that's like the third time I've thought of this. There's another trust, uh, trust element that would come in for me that was like, what could that possibly have to do with this? Yes. Can you talk about that? Because that's where I would probably go like, oh my God, get out of the way. You know, I'm trying to like work over here. And meanwhile, like your inner self is like, hey, look at this thing over here. Good question. Again, we kind of get into that med school thing. You got to go way over here to do this, which doesn't appear to have anything to do with what you're really trying to accomplish. But in fact, it's critical. And until you do this, you won't be able to move forward. Um, you know, you won't be able to become a physician until you understand organic chemistry. And it doesn't matter how much you don't want to learn organic chemistry. It's, a, it's critical to the process, even if as a freshman and, you know, pre-med, you don't understand that it's critical, but it turns out that it is. So you could have a, a, a childhood trauma with your father, for example. And that trauma at, at eight years old left this imprint in your psyche. And here we get into the Jungian stuff. There's an imprint in your psyche that tells you, you are unworthy. You are unlovable. And that gets, that's, that's, that's in your, your basic operating system. And it's in the background and this little pernicious virus that's in the background, in your operating system, in your psyche that says, I'm unlovable. I'm, I'm not worthy because of all of that horrible stuff that happened between me and my father. Well, that's what's getting in the way of you being successful. And you keep trying to push that away going, you know, well, why am I thinking about my dad? It was 40 years ago. Oh, what the hell does that have to do with anything? Get out of here. You're getting in my way. But it's not. It's like that little virus in your computer in the background that's screwing the whole operating system up, but you don't know that it's there mm -hmm. until you do a virus scan and go, oh, shit, that, oh, there it is. God, let's get rid of that thing. And then we can we can get back on track. So and and, and those viruses operate in non-ordinary reality. Quantum physics, again, these things, and I'm going to talk more about that some later time, but these things get stuck. You're entangled with your father through a traumatic emotional encounter that you had when you were eight years old, and you're still entangled with him, even though maybe your father isn't on the planet anymore. Energetically, you're still entangled, and that exists in this non-ordinary reality, which is it's, it, there's no time. You're still living eight years old, that trauma that happened when you were eight years old, and it's spinning in the background of your psyche, and it's screwing up all of your plans to become successful. And again, we go find it, clear it, and you're free of it. But that's where your father could have the, something to happen when you're eight years old, could totally shut down your ability to be successful uh, in, a, in the business world as an adult. I, that is it's such an incredible, thorough and I think really, really important answer because it, it to me, it kind of ties all three of those elements together that you kind of talked about. There's like the med school piece, the spiritual path piece and what's out of, what's throwing you out of phase. There's also a way in which you speak about these viruses as like a virus, which I think is even really useful to call out in and of itself because the way you speak about them is so differently than I have experienced them or other people tend to experience them as reality and oppressive and you're trapped by it and you're stuck by it and you're powerless to it. And you're like, it's this little virus and you just, you know, it's, but there, so can you just talk about that a little bit too? Like the, you encounter these things and I've personally experienced, it doesn't matter if I bring to you something small or something that I think is like unfixable, unsolvable, the end of the world. Yes. You relate to it the same way, which is, huh, this is, and in fact, I can think almost every single session you would start with, this is really cool. And I'd be like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd get mad at me. Patrick. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Um, look, I encountered all sorts of stuff in, in, you know, the 11 years that I've been in practice and, and I've done some really, really kind of serious, ugly stuff with, you know, people that have suffered unimaginable kinds of things. 
and and I've gone in there and cleared stuff out and you know I've worked with multiples and all sorts of stuff. And there's many times where I'm like sitting there and I don't say that you know in the middle of a session, but to me I'm like I don't know what the fuck this is. You know, whoa, what do I do here? You know, yikes. Eh, you know, um, but. Again, I always re revert back to, wait a minute, there's something, there's a structure here, there's circuitry, there's technology. I, we, I just don't understand it. It's something new, but, but it's there. I know the structure's there. I know it's accessible. We just got to figure it out. Um, and, and so that has always helped me. You know, look, I get stuck all the time where I see stuff I've never seen before, but it's again that basic understanding. Wait a minute, we can sort. We'll figure it out. Let's just all right. Let's go one step. What does it look like? What is it? Well, let's get it in focus. Oh, wait a minute. I can look at that line going off back there over to her third chakra. Okay, what does that mean? Let's track that. Oh, I get it. That comes in and that gets involved here and that hooks. Now what? Now right now all right. But but her mom is why is her mother here? All right, let's track that. And and it's kind of you just you know piece the puzzle together slowly, and just take your time and don't panic. And all of a sudden it's like oh shit, I got it now. Great. Okay, now we understand it. Great. Let's fix it. And what's coming to mind now is actually you popped up in my meditation this morning because I had just cleared this really intense virus in my own psyche a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago and then this other kind of like a issue popped into my awareness and i was sitting in my meditation and i thought like oh no i don't want this to be here i want to like have a cool meditation and just feel really good and then your voice popped into my head which is like look at what's in front of you good yeah look at what's in front of you and and follow that because it's that you know pulling into those threads and you know seeing how things are connected that allow other things to show up. Is that right? Like the next thing in your space? It's exactly right. Exactly right. Just, just go slow. You know, it's there. You just, you just can't see it or you can't figure it out. You just know what it is, but, but go slow and step by step. And you slowly, you start to piece the puzzle together. Um, you know, our most fun was, was, you know, with, with you and Pepper. Um, I mean, that was just such, so much fun to like, you know, Vanessa, are you kidding? Look what's coming. Let me tell you, this is like, so, this is like the coolest thing, man. You know, and, and I'm in touch with Pepper and Pepper's communicating with you. And, you know, this is all in utero. And, and you know, and you're, and you're like, really? Wait, re what? 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 Huh? And, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is like the coolest thing. You have no idea what's coming. So yeah. those that, were, that was really fun work. Can you, so like, can we talk about that for a second too? Because I think that is such, of all the gifts you've given me, uh, I mean, just my, uh, my capacity to be in joy and love with Pepper tops the list, but probably just short of second to that was, you know, it's funny because my whole life, I, I never, I always, I guess if I, anyone had asked, I would have considered myself a deeply spiritual person, but that connection to that was so blocked for me to be in the space of you who was like, Oh my God, Pepper is telling me this. And you know, like it could be positive. It could have been like, I remember a session you were like, Ooh, Pepper's getting some mixed information here. We got to like, look at that. Is that structure, like how you see and communicate and get that information the same as the structure that we're talking about in creating these other things or is yeah. it? Yeah. Same thing. You, you know, you, uh, I was born with this ability, innate ability, and it took me decades to figure it out and understand it. But I, I could perceive things in different dimensions when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a very traditional Catholic family, and there was nothing in my world as a child that explained what was happening because of all this rigid Catholic religious stuff that I was exposed to. So I just thought it was crazy. But I kind of lived in this Walt Disney animation through my childhood. I just saw things and knew things, and I know what they were. But 
again, you slowly, I just was able to kind of move around in different dimensions and I got comfortable with it. And then I got into training and that's a whole other story about really seriously learning how to do this. And so you learn to move in different dimensions and anybody could do it. Uh, we're all born with the ability to do it. And in fact, we do it all the time. We just don't know it uh, in working in different dimensions. Uh, I just do, I just learned to do it consciously and be able to direct it. So when it turned out that, you know, Pepper's incarnating uh, with you, I just went into that and said, well, let's connect with, with the baby and see what's going on. You know, maybe it's just kind of routine and, and you know, but um, yeah, I just kind of moved into that dimension and and connected and kind of sensed Pepper and, you know, tuned into her. And then we had all of that fun stuff happen. Yeah. Uh, but it's just it's just move, once you learn to move in different dimensions in and out in a controlled way, you can go anywhere you want and do whatever you want. Which sounds just so fun. But can you give an example of when somebody might be working in multiple di dimensions and not even know that that's what they're doing? I don't even know if that's a question that makes sense. So it does. Oh no. And I get it all the time. I get it all the time. And, and the simplest answer is, um, um, love, think of somebody you love and they go, okay. And, and I go, all right, they've changed your life. Yes. You, you sense them. Um, yes. You can tell whether or not they're in the room with you physically. Yes. Um, they've, they've changed your, 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 they cause, they bring you joy and, and happiness. And all. yes, 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 yes. And I said, okay, now prove it. Show me love. Where is it? What does it look like? How do you measure it? And, and they go, well, you can't do anything. I said, okay, you're having an experience in a different dimension. You're experiencing something that's absolutely real and has changed your life. And yet it has no, no cor correlation to our three dimensional world. Mm -hmm. So everybody lives in different dimensions in, in various ways. When you meditate, you move into different dimensions. Uh, when you are connected to someone you love, you're operating in multiple dimensions at the same time. When you are creating, when you have a creative process, when you have uh, these brainstorms, and that's the, 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 the Stephen Jobs story about how he invented the iPhone. These are multiple dimensions coming into your psyche. Okay, young again. You understand the structure of the psyche, how these different dimensions come in, feed into your psyche, come up into your mental fields, and then we get into second chakra with creativity, creative stuff, and poof, you you create you you formulate a vision of something that hasn't existed before, whether it's a painting or whether it's a business or whether it's a mechanical device or an iPhone. Um, and so you're operating in multiple dimensions. You just don't know it. You just don't, you're just not conscious of it, but everybody does it. And once you kind of start focusing on it, um, you understand it better and you go, Oh my God, this is really fun. Shit. What else can I do? Where else can I go? Jeez. And that's what I did. And, you know, blah, 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 you know, pepper and all the other stuff that I do. That's a great, a really good answer. What's coming to me is if I were to bottom line, what we've talked about so far. It's like your job is to clear your vessel and trust the information. Yes, absolutely. Ultimately, yes. And then you're free to do all sorts of stuff that you came here to do. Right. Um, and and again, a lot of people come to me and they're stuck and then I free them up and then they can go off and do the work they came to do. So it's, it's very rewarding in the end to be able to send these people off. My job, my real job is always to get people to where they don't need me anymore. Yeah. You know, that they're done. We're clear. Go fly free, my darlings. You know, go live your life. Very whatever. effective at that. <laughs> yeah. I want to ask one more question. And maybe I just want to repeat this for myself. Like clear your clear your space and trust the information and take action on that. Like, and if you can and I think everything beyond that is surrender, but now I really can understand why when we talked about this conversation how you were talking about how useful it is to know 
about this structure and about these principles and about the way things work. Because if you were just to go up to someone and say, hey, here's how it works, just clear your vessel and trust the information, <laughs> a lot of people would be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, yeah. you know, but it's like, you know, you talk about this a lot. Like if you showed someone an iPhone 200 years ago, they would have said you were a witch, but like yeah. now we know how it works and you pick it up and you use it and you don't even question it. You just use the technology to make the phone call. Yep. Yep. Exactly right. This is just technology that in, in the things we're talking about today, Vanessa, this is just technology that isn't well understood yet. But quantum mechanics has taken us there and is explaining a lot of stuff. And then you hook that in with some of the other things. And, it, you know, it becomes pretty like, OK, I get it. Um, just like the iPhone. Yeah. The iPhone yeah. today, we, you know, we don't even notice it. And yet it's I mean, look, 20 years ago, the iPhone would have just been, you know, get out of here. No way they're going to invent anything like that. You know, and Stevens Jobs, you know, put it all together in one day, you know, I just hit him and he figured it all out and, you know, and said, let's build it. So, yeah, uh, yeah. there you go. So then I think the last com question, and it might be a big question, I don't know, is this third piece, which is what you're here to do. I know from my personal experience, I constantly... I should be careful how I speak about this historically have put a lot in the way of not doing what I'm here to do. Like, no, I don't want that to be the thing. I want it to be this thing over here. So how can we get clearer, more conscious and surrendered to knowing what we're here for and actually committing to that? Boy, that's 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 the big question. question. Um, let's go back to the basics that we've been talking about. You know, there's a purpose to this incarnation. If you really understand just the basics of incarnation, you know that we go through various incarnations to evolve spiritually. That's, a that's purpose cool. doesn't necessarily have to be like change the world, right? So you just like you oh no. Most often it's not, and that people get very frustrated about. I want to be here to, I want to be this guy and that guy and be famous and all that. And it's like, that's not what you're here for, dude. You're here to be very, you know, you got all this mundane, shit. you got it. You're here to learn organic chemistry. You know, shit, I don't want to learn organic chemistry. I don't want to be a guy. I want to be famous. No, that's the next lifetime. If you successfully complete this lifetime and do the, you know, the prerequisites, then you can move on and do big stuff. Um, how can you access that? How can you know it? It's real simple. Calm yourself down and ask. Everybody has at least two, somewhere between two and four spiritual guides. Every incarnation, you met with your guides before you came here to design this incarnation, to decide the lessons that we were going, you know, you're going to work on, you know, these four things in this next lifetime. This is the, sh the shit you got to do, you know, to move on. And you go, okay. And, and so you come into this lifetime sometimes with other people from past lifetimes and you're here to work out stuff together. If you want to know what that is, and sadly, we grow up in a in a society that doesn't recognize or respect any of this stuff. But that's the facts. This is this is what's happening. So go inside quietly and and ask your guides. Hey, I I I'd like to talk to you about this stuff, and your guides will respond. Maybe in ways that appear mysterious early on, but as you clear your own mental structures and that you can access more easily these higher dimensions you end up having dialogues with your guides all the time i mean like you're talking to real people and and you know you can ask them why why is this happening and they'll tell you this is why and 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 i get the question all the time well how do you know it's just not your monkey mind and you know your brain's just not making shit up and there's a real simple answer to that 90% of the times, if you're authentically connected to your guides, they're telling you stuff that you don't want to do. <laughs> it's just thinking that you're going to get an answer you don't want. It's That's like, it. Oh, you're going to get an answer you don't want. They're going to tell you, you got to go over here and learn organic chemistry. God damn it. I don't want to learn it. You know, 
I don't want it. Well, that's selective. That's you, you want. That's the answer. Mm. So that's how you know that it's real. They will generally tell you not to do something that you want to do, mm. or that you have to do something that you don't want to do. That's like. Yeah, I think I'm hooked in. Yeah. Okay. Well, that just confirms that you are definitely one of my guides incarnate because that's 90% of our conversations. That's that's how you know. And that will also answer an awful lot of questions. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes at a very granular level. Mm-hmm. Why am I having this horrible relationship with this person? What's going on? And it'll they'll explain it to you. You know, maybe it's not about what they're bringing into your life, but what you're bringing in their life. And it's part of your service to help this person move through a lesson, even though emotionally it's very painful for you. It's really part of your service that you're helping them in ways that you don't understand and won't see in this lifetime. But in the end, you are really helping them move through something. Um, And so you can access these kinds of of answers and get direction from your guides, ask, just calmly ask and trust that they will respond and trust in what you, the response is because most of the time it's stuff you don't want to hear. But anyway, it's, it's, it's accessible if you try. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And one thing I'm hearing that I've I've sort of been getting on repeat through all of these conversations is to also recognize like, to take a less self-centered perspective of your life and yourself to yeah. like, even though, you know, your life is about you and the lessons that you learn. Like it's easy to forget like that, ex- just that example of an experience of a relationship you're in, like might not even be about you. You're just like a, I like to tr- remember, like I'm also just a pawn in other people's reality. And uh, I don't know. I just, I heard there's some importance in that too. Like, it's not all about you. It's not all about what you want. It's not all about what you think. It's like, there's some other bigger shit going on here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all in service to each other. Yeah. And, and, and you're not a pawn. You're, you're a very important player in their incarnation and the lessons that they're trying to work through ultimately yeah. and, and the evolution that they're trying to achieve. And, and that's happened to me a lot and it happens to all of us. It's just kind of, again, stepping back, going, wait a minute, there's, there's a purpose here. I just don't know what it is. So let's, let's work on that, clarify the vision. Sometimes you got to step way back to get a better perspective. And then you go, oh, I get it. Uh, and maybe it doesn't make it any easier and it doesn't sure. make it any less painful emotionally, but at least then you can relax and surrender into the service and saying, okay, this is painful for me, but it ultimately moves a soul through a very difficult lesson that they're trying to clear. Okay, fair enough, because God knows other people are doing that for me. That's right. Do you know what I love about where this converse, where we ended up in this conversation is that the beginning really felt like you've got to understand the structure to like get to this thing you want right up here in the middle. And so it's like, there's all this stuff happening underneath it. And then I feel like the second half of this conversation was, and there's all this other stuff surrounding it. Yes. Kind of taking this thing, which is like the goals and the stuff we want out of like the, the sole focal point of the conversation and the experience and kind of just blown the whole thing up and been like, this is all one big part of a big interwoven web. Indeed. Indeed it is. And it's complex and it's complicated and there's, you know, multiple, multiple levels. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't pretend to understand all of it. I've just got a couple of basics that have helped me uh, do my work and, and, you know, free up, other people to continue on their path. I am so grateful for you for being here. I, Mm. there are, like I said in my introduction of you, there are not enough words. There are not enough words to (laughs) articulate how incredibly impactful our work has been together. I cannot encourage anyone listening more to reach out to you. Like if they, if there's anything that they want, I know our work isn't done. I'm excited for what comes next. And I'm just really grateful. So is there any particular place that if people want to reach out to you, they can, we can put it in the chat or we can link it somewhere. Yeah. Just, uh, <clears throat> just send me an email to my um, 
uh, it's John Patrick at shamanic recovery dot com. Um, that goes that goes directly to me. And yeah, that's that's kind of the best way uh, to reach me. And then we can talk further about, you know, what they might want to do. Uh, I don't have a website. Um, and people always ask me, well, you know, your website and that, that's a whole conversation, a whole separate conversation we don't have to go into now. When I when I agreed to be a practitioner and I didn't want to be a practitioner, but when I agreed to be a practitioner, I had certain conditions that I set up with the with the guides and, and with God who asked me to do with all this stuff. And I, one of the things was, is I'm not going to have a website. I'm not going to promote it. I, I'm not interested in that. So I don't have a website, but you can reach me on the email. Yeah. Um, and, and happy to happy to connect with you there. Yeah, which I love that about you. I think it, it makes you even cooler and more mysterious than you are there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret marketing play. Um, no. Well, Patrick, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Always fun to work together, Vanessa. Always fun. Take care. <laughs>